first got involved with bow cars when I found an ad in Hemmings for a 1959 bow car XP5. Belonged to a fellow named Harold Pace from Texas. Harold and I made an arrangement for a deal. I traded him my two plus two Ferrari and $5,000 to get started with bull cars. That was the beginning. My name's Doug Karen, and this is my story of bull cars. Continuation of a 1959 XP5. I fell in love with the lines, the style, and the way they were when I first started racing. That golden era of racing with was the mid 50s to early 60s when other famous names like Bill Devon, Bill Sadler, uh, Berkowski with Old Yeller. There was a whole cottage industry of specials being built to compete against the big guys, Ferrari and Maserati. And they just weren't in the affordable range of an average guy. So all these garage cottage industries got started. Bob Carnes, which came the name Bo Car, had a small factory in Littleton, Colorado, produced a limited amount of cars until he had a mysterious factory fire in the late early 60s, I guess it was around 62. These cars were built to be driven up to Pikes Peak or driven to the racetrack, run all day, and then drive them home, because not many had trailers back in those days. First was my blue and white one, then a red one showed up we chased down out of Florida. The third one was a silver one that we saw a guy was driving through at Rotom, Atlanta, and I chased him down in Picton, South Carolina until we were able to buy that one restore that one, and that now belongs in the Haggerty collection. The last one that we built and restored was the Meisterbrau car back about four years ago that went on with famous history of Harry Hauer and Augie Paps driving those cars back in the late 50s, early 60s. Well, every time I sold one of those, I got upset. I said, God, I love these cars. Why do I keep selling them? I'm going to build one. But I'm going to build one with the way I would build it, not the way Bob Carnes built it, who wasn't an engineer. He used a Volkswagen or Porsche 356 front end, a P-type, like out of an old Corvette solid axle rear end, and they went like hell in a straight line, but they didn't really turn or stop. We decided if there was a possibility, the way I like to restore cars, if you can restore one in the period of the time with the technology that existed, then that's the way to do it, to make them safe and fun and easy to drive. The car that you're looking at today was built to enjoy out on the road all day long. Therefore, it ended up with a Mustang front end and a Jaguar rear end, giving a much better big disc brakes allowing it to be able to stop, run, and go. Making just over 500 horsepower and the same amount of torque with an Inglis cross ram injection on it, I tried to do everything I could to make the ultimate road race special, street car special, universal car for everybody. The building process was unique. I had acquired a set of molds from the, one of the last cars that we bought and decided that we were gonna make four molds. Two to collectors that had bought cars for me just in case they ever had an accident while racing or driving them. And two, one for myself and one for a friend of mine. After they were completed, we took them up and went to DRE Engineering who created race chassis. And I told them I wanted to replicate the chassis as much as I could. So we used some round tube the way that they were built by Bob and then some square tube chassis. Going from there, the car went down to another shop where we did a lot of the, what I call the tin work, framing up after, and each car was fitted with the body and the aluminum all the way around the car. And there we brought it home, started doing the, dropping in the engine. Tzar Engineering created the match between our Crate 383 motor and the Inglis intake. At the time, I sent the dyno run sheets of a downdraft and a side draft, and they made the exact same power within five horsepower of each other, which made 
and Gleese happy to know because he had never had exact motors tested at the same time. From there, we shipped the car down to Arizona because at that point I had an interior guy and another guy, uh, Doug Rippey, who helped me do all the wiring on the car. We did the exhaust for the car and was there when we did the first drive of the car. Also, the interior was done by Glenn's Interiors out of Glendale, Arizona, who's well known in the hot rod world for doing custom interiors. After that, we got titled on the car. It's now titled as an XP 1959 XP5 with all the love and fun that we've used to put it together. We took the car out and showed it a couple of times. It won an award every time and stopped traffic everywhere it went. The number five is on the car because it was the fifth bow car I had. Although I've only put limited miles on the car, it is just a ball with that rear end, brakes, engine, all kinds of torque and horsepower. It is just a treat to run down the road. For more details on this vehicle or similar, please go to huntingridgemotors.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.